literally can't see anyone. I just see like these specters, specter shadow people. I just want to say what's up, man. Uh, How you doing? Yeah, that's good. Anyway, uh, total, total, like totally excited about the uh, pro guitar in the in Rock Band Three. Um, I'm a big fan of just jamming freestyle guitar. Are you guys uh, offering any support for just a, a freestyle jam session mode? Because, I mean, I know you basically have the technology there. Just are you going to incorporate it in the game? Designers? A freestyle jam okay. session on pro guitar is what you're asking for? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. essentially well, plug into like a processor yeah. or... If you can plug in the, the Mustang sort of MIDI out, you can just plug it into your computer and play, and the Squire is a, a real yeah. guitar, and so you just plug it into your amp and play. Like, there isn't really any translation for us to do at that point, it's just a the way you're going out. Well, and so the question is, like, can we, like, use the in-game engine to make music, right? Like, right. Right, um, right now, no, because there's a ton of, like, latency issues, and it, like, would maybe not be as fun as you think it would be. Um, so let like, just be clear about that. Uh, <laughs> I know you think it's not yeah. fun. You are incorrect. No, uh, <laughs> heard it from John Drake. Yeah, guitar is terrible. No, uh, that's why the music, the instruments are so realistic. What Dan says, you're basically ready to turn them into instruments in the world on things that are not running through console processing. So, uh, not right now. No freestyle mode that we have in the drums for guitar this time around in Rock Band 3. Thanks, guys. Nice. Do we have the pro guitars here? Yeah, they're right behind you. Do you want to take one out? I, so, I brought them over. Are they gone? Yeah. Just in case people have a seat. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> you do the bathroom too, I can tell you if you do that. <laughs> Where's the bit for outside the Well, that's going on. I can show you the first cut we ever had of a pro guitar tutorial. Oh, yeah, awesome, Dan. We have great tutorials in the game, so let's yeah. see. So, this is, a, this is actually a really rough cut, and like it talks about too much information, but it's the kind of stuff that we hopefully can teach you in, uh, in Rock Band 3. This, this is not in the final game. You can rewatch this video any time from the pause menu in the trainer. To play standing, Attach each end of your strap to the action button. Put your dominant arm through the strap, then pull it over your head. The guitar should hang on one shoulder like this. Adjust the length of the strap so that the guitar is comfortably in reach without having to support the weight with your arms. Using a pick will make it easier to strum and pick cleanly. Hold the pick between your thumb and second finger like... So, I just want to say something here. We realized after making this that maybe we don't have to teach people how to hold the guitar. <laughs> These are a lot shorter now, but uh, we'll well, keep going. It reminds me of the scene in Tommy Boy where he's explaining how to buckle his seat belt to people on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> you're not, you're an idiot. You'll want to hold the pick loosely for strumming chords and tightly for picking individual <laughs> strings. Your guitar has six strings. The largest <laughs> strings are on top when you look down on the neck. From largest to smallest, the notes of the strings are E. A, D, G, B, and E again. These six strings are represented by six lanes on the track, like this. Hey, pre-alpha build of Rock Band 3. This is the Pro Guitar HUD. Each string has different colored gems come down the track that you hit when they cross the now bar. The number on the gem indicates what fret you should be holding down when you strum that string. The frets on the guitar are raised metal lines on the neck. You want to press the string. Okay, I'm sorry, this is a little too painful to watch. Jesus. <laughs> it's a lot shorter now. It's why, did we, why did we ever shorten this or change the HUD from the weird graphics of dudes standing in the shadows that we had before? It was great. But the, so, uh, that. so Aaron's bringing around the Mustang right now, which is really cool. Uh, the sort of 20 second summary of all of that is that this uh, track shows the strings on the actual guitar from low E to high E, so biggest string on the left. Uh, notes will come down each string, which tells you you have to play on that string, and they'll have a number inside it, which tells you the fret you have to play. Uh, and then for chords, we didn't want to show like six numbers coming down the track, because that was insane. So we made up a chord language that essentially shows where you should put your fingers. Let me see if I can find... Uh, so like, here's an example of like, it's, a, it's a simple power chord, essentially. It's like, don't fret the first string and fret the uh, uh, second string on the second fret. And it's, the shape of the, uh, the gem is basically showing what your fingers look like. So if you hold a you know, power chord, it's going to look like a hill. If you hold an A chord, it's going to look like the shape of an A chord. It's also not an F major 7. Who wrote this? No, this is a... This is a <laughs> that's an E power chord. This so is why it's a name. Yeah, but like, so that, that's probably a better example of a power chord. Than... And as you uh, hold your uh, fingers on the uh, strings, you'll start to see uh, there's what we call the position wave. Uh, on, that's near the now bar, and it's, it's not represented here, but basically what it'll do is, like, you're trying to f uh, match your finger shape 
to the shape of the chord coming out of the track. And uh, it's kind of like, uh, I think Sylvan uses the analogy of like, what's that? Uh, or the Japanese, uh, the human most Jewish extreme religion. Really my fucking analogy. analogy. <laughs> you know that? Okay, yeah, so I made this joke. About, I made this joke a couple days ago at, at GameStop, and no one knew what I was talking about. Do you guys know that Japanese game show where the wall comes down a track at the people? And then, Thank you. Right? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> GameStop guys. There was an American was version about. too. Yeah, it's a lot like that. That's what the game. All of Rockman Three is based around that show. <laughs> <laughs> the center design of Butterfly. But yeah, that's the, uh, that's uh, per guitar in a rambling one and a half minute speech. Yeah. So next, <laughs> next question. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm a big Faith No More fan. I'm glad to see that there's one on Rock Band 3. Yeah. What I was wondering about is when you guys choose the track, is it like mostly the artist's choice? Or how do you go about picking which one from a band? It's, um, there's, it's, a, it's a very, very complicated process, which is hard to distill, unfortunately. A lot of it is... We have our own picks for songs we want. Uh, artists will often suggest songs. Uh, you know, our MTV, these guys, Overlord, will often suggest stuff. Uh, but it all, it all comes down to whatever goes on the disc has to be something that's you know, fun to play. So we uh, we might choose a song that's not necessarily the most well-known song by a band, but we chose it because it's the best and most fun song to play. So a lot of it, like there's a lot of sources coming in, like you guys commenting on rockband.com and suggesting songs is another source of it. But eventually it comes down to we look at it, all the songs people have suggested, when we have our own picks, and we uh, we try and find the songs that are just really awesome and fun to play. Well, when a game developer and a music label love each other very much. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing. <laughs> so there are a lot of spokes on that wheel, right? So it's like songs that we want, songs that would be good for gameplay, songs that masters exist for, which people often forget. It's like sometimes we just songs that people request. Uh, songs that labels are trying to push, like bands that labels are having revivals for, or that they're really focusing on, and then like overall, just like the number of people who own publishing rights to music is astronomically more complicated than most people understand. And like I work in music to a certain extent and still don't understand a lot of what we do. So it's like you could have someone who like three people own the writing credits of songs, six people own the the masters of publishing, and two people own like the record label side of it. If you get everyone's approval, it's just a, it's a fucking mess. So we don't always get exactly what we want. We try to find what the fans want, and then like fight with those people as hard as we can. That's why we have Midlife Crisis. Actually, they were very cooperative, but Midlife Crisis is awesome. Thank you for liking it.